Hey, how's it going guys? My name's Daniel, aka Hashlips, and welcome back to my channel. Uh, it's been a while since I've made a video, but I've been very busy behind the scenes with work, and I finally am bringing you this new update to the Art Engine 2.0. So if you are new to the art engine and you do not know what we are going to be talking about, you can go to this playlist on my YouTube channel by going to the playlist section and clicking on new NFT art engine 2.0 playlist. There's two videos that's explaining um, how to use it. Today we are just looking at an update. Back in NPM we can see that the new version is now alpha 5. You can always download a previous version if there are some breaking changes because remember we are developing this tool and there might be some breaking changes. The latest one with this change is alpha 5. Now we're going to go over to the template uh, repository. This template is not the art engine itself, it's just a uh, template that incorporates the art engine and makes it easy for you to use it and generate your NFTs. Because I'm making YouTube videos about the code, I always tag the versions so that you know that the tags align. So go over to the tag section and today we're going to focus on YT standing for YouTube 2 and this is the one we can use. So you can either click here uh, and download the source file over there uh, or we can just go back and we can just get uh, clone this repo. Let's clone the repo to our desktop. I'm going to go to code, copy the repo URL. Then open your favorite terminal. I'm just going to CD into my desktop. So desktop and we can see there's the files. And for now, we want to write git clone dash b for the branch. And here we want to specify the tag. So yt dash 2. And then we're going to paste uh, that URL. So let's hit enter and let it clone to our desktop. I can see that the file was created. And now we can see the contents are in here. So let's go ahead and open this folder on Visual Studio Code. Now we can select the folder and it's this one and let's open it up. And here's our project. And we even get some test data to work with. Now the previous videos explain exactly how this all works. And for the following videos coming, I'm not gonna show this download and cloning process. We most likely just gonna start off in the state, but always make sure that you are on the correct YT tag so that your actual code corresponds with the video that you are watching. Okay, so now we can go to the top and click on Terminal, New Terminal. The next step is, is, is to install our dependencies. So I'm gonna use Yarn and hit Enter. You can alternatively use npm install, uh, but I like using Yarn. So now that our dependencies are installed, node modules are there, we are ready to use the actual art engine. So we have this index.js and here is a base project set up. I don't want to sound like a parrot, but yes, the previous videos explains this all. But to go over this briefly is we start up, we import the art engine and some of the plugins. We then create a new art engine. We give it some inputs. We give it some generators, renderers and exporters. And this is the basic flow. At the end, we call the art engine and we also print the performance, wrapping it in this async uh, function. So if we want to run it, we can just simply open this up and type in yarn start or npm start. And there we go. The art engine has now ran and done its actual job by taking some of these layers and merging it. And for the output, we get some ERC721 metadata files we also get Solana metadata files, and that's because we have our exporter set to export Solana as well. Plus, we have our images, which is looking pretty good. Okay, and that is essentially how the base art engine works. Now, for time being, I just want to focus on these logs. And that is because in the new Alpha 5 version, you'll get this extra output, and these are hashes. And this is to do with a new caching system that I've implemented. We'll explain this in just a bit, but just know that is what this is for and we have our expected output. What you'll realize is the output for generating, rendering and exporting runs for each plugin that you have now. And we'll see that in action in just a bit. 
And lastly, we have our performance check, which we can check on the numbers. Now in the code, how do we use the caching system? Well, we can go back to the index.js file and right here at the top, if you want to enable this experimental caching feature on the art engine configuration, you put this use cache flag to true. So I'm going to do this right now and set this to true. And then we're going to run it again. But before we do, I'm going to grab a snapshot of this so we can actually reference the before and after results. Okay, so make sure that you've saved your file with the cache set to true. And now I'm simply going to run yarn start again. This time it is a lot quicker and you'll realize that loading uh, loaded from the cache, generating from the cache, rendering from cache as well. Exporters never run on the cache. And if you want to simply uh, not re-render the images, you simply comment out the exporter for that matter. And uh, that's how you do it with the exporters because the previous ones depends on the cache. And the exporter simply just outputs your final uh, output in this folder. So we always want to re-render that unless the exporter is commented out. For example, if you've run this once and you just want to update the metadata, it's a good idea to comment out the images, run the engine with your updates in here. Okay, that being said, let's now grab a new screenshot of this and let's compare the before and after results. Okay, so as we can see, here's the before and you can finally check it out yourself, but there is quite a substantial difference when you are using the cache. Um, you can see that some of these things use a seconds and when you use the cache, it's in milliseconds. And we'll do a final bigger test with rendering more files at the end of this video. But just to show you the comparison. Next, I want to show you the reason why this actually ran with cache is because now this output over here was the same for inputs, generators, renderers, and the temp folder. And that's when we know that the cache is synced. Now, I am going to show you something and how this cache kind of works. So you also have a better understanding and this will help you to develop plugins in the future for this application. So how does this cache work? Well, this output is linked to this cache folder over here. Every time the art engine runs, these caches get updated regardless if you are opting in to use the cache or not. The cache has simply to do uh, with the rendering and kind of if it needs to use it, but it's always going to generate these files. Now, you won't see the config over here, but the config cache is indeed here and is being used in the back. And this is the config that you provide the art engine. Next, as we can see, we've got inputs and this is saved in the inputs. And these are the inputs that's generated from the inputs in the config. And you can see all of them here. And this is why I'm saying this will help you to develop plugins because you can always see what the previous step provides you. And the same, for generators, what it generates, for renderers, and the renderer temp folder. But for now, don't worry about this cache file too much. You're never going to touch it. The thing that you will do with the cache is potentially remove it in an edge case that I'll show you later on. But for example, if we were to delete one of these cache files, so let's say we deleted the generators file and it's not there in the cache anymore. If we rerun the art engine, what you'll see the generators file was generated and the generating took place without the cache. And we can also see that there was a mismatch in these two ashes. And that's how the art engine knows to re-render at a global level. But what happens if we change something in the actual index implementation uh, on the configuration file? Let's see. For this, let me clear the terminal. And then we're going to change some of the configuration. So I'm going to take this input and maybe just duplicate this and say, well, we're going to have a new dog or dogs layer, even though it's pointing to the same one just for this uh, purpose. We're going to save this and then we're going to run the art engine. What we'll notice now is that these caches, of course, they stay the same, but because the configuration changed, what happened was it picked it up as a config change and it loaded the config again while well, it loaded the actual inputs again and then it generated again. 
And the reason why it generated, even though we didn't touch the generators, if the previous step changes in config, then the uh, one just after it has to re-render for if there was any changes, and so on. So for example, if we uh, were to remove these dogs, and we used the generator, and we had an extra generator, maybe this pointed to the same one, but we wanted to generate from 11 to 13 maybe, we save it, we run it again, we'll notice that everything is rendering without the cache. Because not only did the uh, input change, but the generators change and so on. So essentially, if the previous step changes, the one after it will re-render without the cache to make sure that it's clean and that any changes are captured. Now, let me talk about the edge case that I mentioned before. The edge case happens when you are changing your configuration as I was doing right now. And for some reason, while I was doing this, I potentially deleted the cache file. If I were to do this, we can see in the outputs folder, there are all these images that's rendered currently. If I run this, it's going to generate uh, the 13 files over this. And that's because in the cache, we actually deleted the seed. The seed is sometimes used in some of the plugins optionally by someone who writes the plugins to say um, that they want to have a predictive randomability. And that's why these files will be generated again. So the safest way to make sure that you have a clean, fresh build while you are busy changing things uh, in your art engine is simply to remove your output file completely, uh, delete this whole cache file, and then turn the use cache to false. Go ahead and make as many changes as you want. Re-render them. I'm going to, for this uh, example, just do five. Uh, go and re-render it until you are very happy. And then start turning on the cache. Uh, if you're not going to change too many things yet at the top, just turn it on. And um, you can then feel comfortable that your changes are being cached. And every time you have to do something in the exporters because that's not cache, you know that it's going to run very, very fast because all the previous steps are cached and they are the same. So I hope this makes sense and I hope you can see some of the value why this cache is here. In later versions, we are actually going to implement granular caching. So it will pick up when small uh, files or even uh, the layers change. Then it will only adapt those files. But for now, this is experimental. Have some fun with it. And let's do a bigger test. So for the bigger test, we're not going to make it too big, but let's render a hundred elements. I'm going to clear my terminal and run yarn start. It's going to start uh, exporting. And obviously it's finding a ton of duplicates because I do not have enough layers. Okay. Let's undo that. Obviously you need enough layers to facilitate hundred NFTs, right? So I'm going to clear it again. Uh, let's do a smaller batch. Let's just do 50. Uh, maybe we can generate 50, run it again, it's rendering, and uh, it is going to take some time for this to work. I'm going to show you the results or the actual printout just now, and there we go. So we can see that this took about nine seconds to do the rendering, and that's quite a lot of time. So if I go and turn on the flag for our cache, and we rerun the application, this is how fast it takes now, 39 milliseconds, and all this stuff is in milliseconds, and you can see that it is a very big difference. So this is the new caching system in the new Art Engine 2. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Please remember to like this video, and also subscribe if you're enjoying my content that I'm making and the changes to the Art Engine. I really appreciate that. Leave me a comment below what you think and what you want to see next. Um, I think for the future updates, we'll better the CLI over here. And I'm going to be working on some documentation so that you as a developer can start creating your own plugins and publishing them for anyone else to use as well. I hope you have a fantastic day and cheers for now. I'll see you in the next video.